Uh, you okay there, Shepard? After the success story that was Mass Effect, Bioware planned a trilogy and immediately went to work on a sequel. Their first priority was taking in any feedback and requests from users so they can continue the story while responding to what the gaming community wants. Despite many setbacks during development in the late 2000s including the financial crisis and swine flu, it wasn't a Metroid Prime horror story. The development team did everything they wanted, on time and on budget. On January 2010, Mass Effect 2 was released on the Xbox 360 and PC. Even though EA purchased Bioware in 2008, there were no plans to release Mass Effect 2 for the PlayStation 3, but eventually changed their mind and it was released for the system a year later using the same game engine as Mass Effect 3 and came bundled with almost every DLC. Commander Shepard and his crew save the Citadel from the Geth and humanity's place in Citadel space is stronger than ever. But the Reapers, the real enemy, have only begun their dirty work on galaxy extinction, and nobody believed they exist. Months later, the crew ride the Normandy to search for more Geth activity in space, but then a big ship comes out of nowhere to attack heavily on the Normandy. So heavy in fact, the crew had to pull the plug. Shepard just missed out on the emergency pods and got stranded in space, dying slowly from oxygen loss. That's it. You're dead. Game over, man. Game over. Or is it? Without illustration, Shepard is picked up to be revived, regardless of the odds. Like the first game, you create Commander Shepard by editing facial features, backstory, military specialization, and psychology. However, this time, if you transfer save files from the predecessor to this, you continue the story based on the decisions you made previously, immediately creating mass replay value like no other. So that means Drex and Annis have their stats and past actions join with them. Two years later, Shepard awakes to realize he or she is under attack. Adding to the shock, Shepard finds out that Cerberus were the ones who recovered him or her. I don't care what they did or what you say, I'm not working with terrorists. Shepard was brought back to life to continue unfinished business. Cerberus leader known as the Elusive Man orders him or her to develop a crew to reach the Collectors who have teamed up with the Reapers and are targeting human colonies. You've seen it yourself. you bested all of them. That's just one reason we chose you. Shepard is given a new Normandy with an AI. Helmsmen aren't happy when someone takes control of a ship away from them. Especially Joker. A customizable cabin and a combination of fresh and familiar faces, while at the same time questioning Cerberus. Unless you take the renegade path, then you don't give a shit. You'll have to play the first game to really understand what's going on. But, fine by me anyway, because the story of the Mass Effect trilogy as a whole is one of the best in video gaming. And this entry has the best of the trilogy. It has an incredibly deep and engaging story, certainly a darker one compared to the predecessor. The Reapers are dirtier, Shepard is working for an extremist organization, and the characters are more... complex. You humans have a saying, an eye for an eye, a life for a life. He owes me ten lives, and I plan to collect. The dialogue to go with it is fantastic as you'd expect. When you have A-list talent in a video game, with a story like Mass Effect, it creates an interactive cinematic experience that could probably rival other science fiction greats like Star Wars. I do the hard things civil governments are unwilling to. This is for the good of the galaxy. All surviving characters from the first Mass Effect are back. Some rejoin you like Tally and Garrus. Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. And the rest have simply moved on. Until Mass Effect 3 came around the corner. I like that Bioware introduced new characters to keep the series fresh and new up to that point. Each member of your crew is different and it creates conflict and tension inside the Normandy. They all have their own individual loyalty missions that are certainly worth your time, especially if you're trying to get everyone to survive the, quote, suicide mission. Because these are developed enough to feel like they're part of the main story. You can't face the truth, can you? Can't admit that your brilliant mind led you to commit an atrocity! Basically, these missions allow each character's personality and backstory to shine individually. You can tell how developed Mass Effect 2 is if the characters have their own unique dialogue depending on mission and location. He's becoming a full adult. Wait, so this is a pilgrimage? I don't care what aliens call it, he's becoming a full adult. Adolescence. 
Can't we just take him to Omega and buy him a few dances? I don't care what aliens call it. There are additional members like Zaid, Kasumi, and for one mission, Liara Dasoni, but you need to pay extra, which can piss anyone off. But because I got the whole trilogy compilation on PlayStation 3, at least I was able to get most, if not all, additional characters and DLC for free, including Lair of the Shadow Broker, which involves defeating the anonymous Shadow Broker with Liara. The romantic side carries into Mass Effect 2. Garrus and Tali, who were part of your crew in the first game, are now romantic interests thanks to fan requests. Wait a minute. It sounds like you're suggesting something, Tally. What could I possibly be suggesting? There were so many things Bioware did based on user feedback, like vehicle controls, the inventory screen, and texture pop-ins. They're still present occasionally, but it's not as obvious. You could say that Bioware is the closest thing to EA that's... caring. Anyway, what was I meant to be talking about? Romance? I just went off topic, but it was worth noting and praising Bioware's willingness to listen to user feedback. To start a romantic relationship with someone this time, make sure you've completed the loyalty mission, which makes sense. Then after a few conversations, they'll eventually give the impression that they want you. Perhaps I wouldn't mind if you admired my body. However, if Shepard already hooked up with someone from the first game, make sure he or she expects backlash from that partner. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. We need to stay professional. Because Drex, Shepard was already in a relationship with Liara to Sony, he decided to stay loyal. If Shepard was in a relationship with someone from the first game, there will be a photo of him or her in the private cabin, and if Shepard cheats, the photo will be placed down and put back up once the cheating relationship is over. However, Annis Shepard wasn't in a relationship with anyone in the predecessor, and I decided that she get together with Garrus, because he's my favorite character in the Mass Effect franchise. He's hilarious to say the least when it comes to love. Your um, hair looks good, and your waist is very supportive. Tell me Garrus isn't the best character in Mass Effect. I dare you. Need I say more? Well, this part's not controversial this time because the brainless hypocrites must have finally realized that what they said about the first game was untrue, and this wasn't worth opening their mouths about. But, let's not forget that this is a video game. The controls are reworked from the first game, which can be annoying if you're accustomed to the controls from the predecessor. But when you play Mass Effect 1 a second time after playing this, you'll realize just how much they've improved. That's what I do. Solve problems. They introduce a cover button, the guns have ammo, and the stat system is more basic. You can also add shortcuts to the available powers so you don't have to keep pausing it. Little things. It just feels like the complete package, and a template for future RPG shooters. Even though it's considered an RPG, you still require real-time shooter skills, which is one of the main reasons why I love this game. Mass Effect 2 is so addictive, I never wanted to stop playing until I finally beat it, even if I played this more than once. I want to experience all possible pathways, and again, and again. One thing I didn't mention in my original Mass Effect review was how tedious the inventory selection was. You can only carry 150 items at once, and if you want to get rid of them to save space for future items, well, let me demonstrate what it's like. In short, tedious beyond belief. Let's remember that next time Shepard sets us up against impossible odds. Twice a day, on average. In Mass Effect 2, Bioware completely reworked it. There aren't as many upgrades, but there's no limit to how many you can have. Shepard scans these with his or her army tool and researches it on the Normandy, which costs different resources. You can scan planets to find resources and even find side quests for extra credits, experience points, and upgrades. They also solve the overflow of weapons by programming it so you have to select the weapons at the start. I don't think it's worth researching upgrades unless you either want to find every side quest which involves scanning the planets anyway, or if you set the game on a higher difficulty, then you'll need every upgrade you can find. The morality really shines in this game. You feel the good in Shepard when a Paragon choice is made. Talon, I'm Commander Shepard. I don't work with the Mercs and I don't want to hurt you. I'm here to help. And the ruthlessness when selecting a Renegade remark. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Getting a lot of bullshit on this line. More like the sense of humor when selecting your renegade remark. 
To make morality more diverse, Mass Effect 2 introduces moments in cutscenes when Shepard can interrupt with either a renegade approach. I'm done being patient. Give me a name or I'll cut your balls off and sell them to a Krogan. Or a Paragon approach. My baby is gone. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just miss her so much. It's okay. We've all suffered loss. There's just so much more character in Shepard that it makes him or her in the first Mass Effect feel... empty. Besides, I just spent 50 credits on this pistol and I want to use... Get your money back. Hey! What are you... Trust me, kid. You'll thank me later. Also at the beginning of the game, because Shepard's scars didn't heal completely after being woken up, he or she can either perform Paragon actions to heal the scars, or Renegade actions to make them more severe. Or even better, if you have 50,000 Platinum, you can instantly remove them. I don't know whether to say if the loading is better or worse. At the very least, it looks better. Like arriving on a planet, for example, it illustrates how the Normandy drops off the transport, and standing on an elevator was taken away. But unfortunately, you have to wait longer to move to another level, and I timed it on the Normandy. 50 seconds. When you die, it still takes just as long to reload. 29 seconds. You think you're gonna run in a Spectre? I think both of you should get out of here. But, at least this time, it auto saves more often and during gameplay. Some planets have random encounters just like the first game and most of them are simply returning characters who find a different way of saying that they thought Shepard was dead. Arya wants to know what brings a dead Spectre to Omega. Can't be too careful with dead Spectres. Our scanners are picking up false readings. They seem to think you're... dead. But the formerly deceased Shepard is not a sign of gentle change. I thought you were dead, Commander. We all did. Shepard? The news said you were dead. Commander Shepard? I, I thought you died. The money you get from completing a mini assignment or interaction is... Optimistic, to say the least. I talked to one of the Presidium groundskeepers. He said there aren't any fish in the lakes. What? I told you. Thanks for telling me. It's all he's talked about all damn day. Here's a thousand credits. Uh, thank you? I guess being set in 2185, you have to put adjusted inflation into consideration. One thing I forgot to mention in the first review is how beautiful the music is. Uncharted Worlds and Vigil in particular. I couldn't be happier that these pieces of music are on all three Mass Effect games. Combined with the presentation and graphics, which I don't even need to talk about, just look at it. It takes inspiration from many different sci-fi greats like Star Wars, Blade Runner, and Alien. The galaxy is an incredible place to explore. The universe is a dark place. I'm trying to make it brighter before I die. Now, this is a possible spoiler alert, but this is the most memorable part of the entire Mass Effect trilogy, and how you played not just this game, but the first one too, will all come down to this. The link to skip the spoiler alert is here. Okay, that's enough time. The final mission involves being inside the Collector Base. Shepard has to choose different specialists for each area, select leaders for different teams, and obviously take over the base. If you plan strategically, play all the cards right, and gain the loyalty of every member of your crew, everybody will come out of the suicide mission alive. But if you play it poorly, there's a possibility that nobody, not even Shepard, will make it. So the way you play the game determines the outcome of the final mission. One thing I will say is this, you won't get everyone to survive the first time. It's a learning curve but it's a really satisfying feeling a second time getting all these likeable characters to make it, ready for the next mission. This is yet another holy shit, this is unbelievable video game, and a perfect case in point when a sequel is better than the original in every way. It's not only one of the best games of the 2010s, the 7th generation, the shooter genre, the RPG genre, but it ranks among the likes of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Metroid Prime, and Half-Life 2, as one of the greatest video games of all time. But not THE greatest, because like movies and music, there is no such thing. But my point being, Mass Effect 2 is an undeniable masterpiece in video gaming, and it more than deserves a 10 out of 10. In short, everything from the gameplay, the controls, the story, the characters, and replay value are off the charts. Play this game if you haven't yet. 
Actually, play the Mass Effect trilogy as a whole. You won't regret it. And Mass Effect 2 is hands down the best of the three. Thank you, Bioware. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some calibrations that need fixing. I'm the very model of a scientist Salarian. I've studied species Turian, Asari, and Batarian. I'm quite good at genetics as a subset of biology because I am an expert which I know is a tautology. My xenoscience studies range from urban to agrarian. I am the very model of a scientist Salarian.